always get asked by a lot of MMA, combat sports, and athletes in general is how to develop a strong, powerful, and explosive back. I'm going to share with you 15 different variations of rowing or back-based exercises that are going to take you from building strength and ability to produce a lot of force to some more power-based exercises, a few athletic type movements or row variations where there's going to be a few different pieces happening to them involving the whole body and then more of our explosive and very high, high velocity based exercises. So if you don't know me, my name is Nick Lydon. I'm a certified strength and conditioning coach, uh, member or owner of the Peak Performance Program and worked with hundreds and hundreds of athletes at the highest level all the way down to high school. Um, so before we kind of dive into things, I must say that unlike the lower body, developing power with the upper body, especially the back, is going to become more reliant on just being stronger with it. So your back doesn't quite get the same response from tendons, right? Like as in running or sprinting, we have the ankle that comes down, pops against the ground. We get that stretch shortened cycle happening, and then boom, we get some free energy from it, right? We're not built to run on our hands. So we don't, our body wasn't designed quite to have the same amount of tendons and things to give us some of that free energy kind of back. So it is going to be more reliant on muscular driven power and rate of force development in order to make this happen. So the first one right off the bat that everyone should know, it should be a staple on a lot of athletes programs is the bent over row. Okay. Now, you're going to see I have some wrist wraps on for these heavier exercises. There's controversy back and forth between should athletes use wrist wraps or not use wrist wraps. Um, I think in the beginning, no. But once you get to a certain point where your grip strength is strong, but now it is truly becoming the limiting factor, then it's okay to put them on to truly get the most out of it. So bent over row, right? Making sure you have a strong core, making sure you're locked in, driving and pulling the elbows up on back um, with it. Now, the next variation is a pendule row. So it's or off of pins or Anderson variation. There's a couple different uh, ways or terminology that you can use to get the same effect. And that is essentially taking out any of that stretch shorten cycle is taking out any momentum and it's purely going to focus on the concentric muscle action to pull the weight on up. They are a lot harder to do. So you'll typically have to go a little bit less with the weight, but they are great for developing large amounts of strength and force development um, with the back. Now, moving in to the next one. It's another variation of a row. It's called a power row. So like a cheat row almost. So the goal of this is to get a little bit of leg drive so we can get some of that, like a heavier load off the ground. We can get it going and moving with a greater bar speed and then finishing off the row. So you're taking that heavy load through a little bit faster of a movement to generate a little bit more overall force with it. These are really great. All of those are staples in our training. Now, the next one, we're going to get into a dumbbell variation. So I'm sure all of you have seen like single arm dumbbell row and, and all those different types, which are a great exercise to develop and strength. And I highly recommend it. This version is an unsupported row, meaning that you are trying to resist your body from having to turn, right, with the load kind of trying to pull you down. So it's great for getting some core development. Um, you're going to feel it in that lead leg as well. Um, once your core strength is, is up to par, you should be able to row just almost as much as you would if it was supported. You're never going to be truly the same as if you have that hand supported and, and you're, you're more stable. But your goal is to try to develop enough core strength to be able to get up to, I would say, 85, maybe 90% of what you'd normally be able to do. So those are the strength ones. And with strength, power, everything, we want to progressively overload, meaning that you're either increasing load, you're increasing frequency, how many times you do it throughout the week, um, or you're increasing overall volume throughout the week or the day that you choose to do it. Now, with strength, power, there's all these different rep ranges, um, but that's for another video that I, I've broken down plenty of times that you can go check out. So let's get into the power-based exercises. 
So these first two are going to be variations of one another. Um, it is a banded barbell row and a banded trap bar row. So for the banded barbell row, you can see those bands, the only ones I had at the gym at the time, they're too thick. I couldn't quite get the bar all the way up to my chest. So I definitely recommend the quarter inch ones. And you're going to have to significantly reduce the weight that you you have on the bar. I wouldn't be trying to go super heavy and only half half repping these. Um, I would go, you know, probably down to about 50, 40, 50% of what you normally could do for say a bent over row on these. Now, if you look at those and then you also look at the banded trap bar row, there's something special that I'm doing on the eccentric or lengthening portion of the movement where it's on the way down is I'm actually almost releasing with my hands. My hands are still on the bar, but I'm almost releasing and letting that band pull the weight down super fast and then trying to catch it. So that's where we're going to get some of that eccentric uh, overload and we're going to get some of that stretch shortened cycle where I'm trying to catch and then rapidly pull it on back up. So little things like that you can add in to help get some of that, you know, stretch shortened cycle and more of that, uh, kind of power that we're looking for out of it um, with those two variations. And even on the next one, which is an oscillating row, the whole point of an oscillation row, it's like those pulse type of squats, right? You're trying to go in and out of a position very, very quickly, okay? So we're essentially trying to teach our body how to contract and relax very, very quickly in a very, very short amount of time or produce a lot of force in a short amount of time, but in that initial, and then immediately letting it go back down. So it's very one to two inches with these. I like to do three, maybe four oscillations and then take it into a full rep where you're trying to pull that bar up as far and as hard as you possibly can. Now we're going to move into some like Olympic lift variations because the back does get hit in some Olympic lift variations as you're pulling the bar on up. And it's probably one of the fastest versions, like bar speeds is probably one of the fastest variations, which I really like it. Um, and it's a snatch grip hang high pull. Okay. So you're going to get, again, you're going to get a little momentum from the legs, but you're really focusing on ripping the bar on up and moving that bar with as much intent as possible. Okay. So if you wanted to make these a little bit lighter, a little bit faster, more explosive, you just lighten the load and move the bar faster. And you're hoping to achieve around, I would say over a meter per second. If you have any tracking apps that help you one that we use it for our athletes called metric VBT. Um, you just put it on the side, boom, and it'll calculate it out there. It'll show, it'll show you peak power, peak velocity. It'll, it'll show you everything. Um, that's, I don't, I'm not sponsored or anything. I just think they're a good free app to use for athletes. Um, and if you're really trying to go high, high velocity, I would say like 1.3 meters per second plus. And if you're trying to go a little bit more power, you add a little bit more weight, you're going to be around 0.75 to 1 point meters per second with that. So snatch grip, hang high pull, and then also the clean grip, hang high pull are really great for that. They're going to be slightly different. The, the clean grip, you're probably going to be able to do a little bit more, um, but you're just working slightly, same muscles, but slightly different components of it with it. The next one, we're going to try to get into more of a true type of plyometric. I would say it's almost a plyometric for like your grip and your back a little bit and it's one that we use throughout our program a lot for a lot of our like substitution based exercises if we don't have say like a sled with some trx straps that we can throw in there because that is a really great one and again same principles apply you can go a little bit heavier loaded get a little bit more power out of it you can go a little bit lighter get a little bit quicker velocity with it the reason i like the sled row which it's um not on my list but i would is just because i didn't have it in the gym to be able to show you here um is that when you go and like take your steps back and lean forward, you do get a big stretch on the lats before coming and pulling all on the way back, right? So you can get kind of a true power for a row. You can also take it up overhead too if you're trying to work the shoulders, rotate your cuffs a little bit as well. It's a great variation of it. But the invert in and out to, to inverted plyo row is a great one for some grip strength too. Um, so you can see you're having to dynamically grab and grip as you bring your chest up to bar and go down very fast with it. You can play around with different hand positions going here to here, right? Uh, like one reverse, one over and switch it to work a little bit different um, pulling muscles with it. 
So those are our power-based exercises. There's about six, seven of them that we went through. Now, this next category is going to be a little bit more like what people say, like functional or athletic, right? It's just multidisciplinary, meaning that there's a few different things going on. We're having to coordinate the body a little bit more, but the goal is still the same, okay? So this first one is something I call like a cable, not something, it's called a cable lawn mower row. Um, you, it might be called something else, somewhere else by another coach. But essentially what I'm doing is I'm setting the cable up on a very low, the lowest position that I can, and I'm turning at about a 45 degree angle. So when I reach across, I get a big stretch in my lat and then the opposite side glute. So we're getting a little bit of what's called posterior oblique sling work um with this movement so essentially what we're trying to do is we're trying to start the movement by pressing through the foot externally rotating the hip and getting the glute involved and then taking that up into a row so you have the the lat on the right side and then the glute on the left side or vice versa so these are really great add some add some hip um internal external rotational work helps you coordinate the lower body up through the core, up through the lat a little bit to get a little bit more like transferable of sport um, with these. Now, the next one is another single arm carry bait, uh, cable row variation. So this is just a staggered stance straight, straight ahead. You're going to feel like your glute meat turning on to help stabilize. There's also a little bit of anti-rotational work happening um, where your torso is trying not to move side to side. You can see though in the video, I am leaning down into it. So we're getting like a little bit of a coiling effect that's gonna help you turn your lat on a little bit more as you drive the elbow on back. You may get a little oblique to turn on um, with that as well. The next one is a T-Rex row and reach. Uh, this is really great for like scapula health um, as we're getting some protraction and retraction. We're also getting some T-spine movement. So essentially you're gonna set up in a bridge position with your arm lengthened out keeping your hips driving on up, you're gonna have to press through your feet really hard to keep try to keep your hips as square as possible, that is the goal, before rowing on up and then reaching and protracting that shoulder as much as you can, bringing it back on down, and then getting a big hip and T-spine separation before coming and pulling your way back on up. Now moving into the very high, very uh, explosive, fast velocity based movements this is going to be more of you can't really get this with anything else unless it was a super light loaded movement for an olympic lift variation um with the banded rows so you may look a little funny in the gym um, but you're going to get a lot of high high velocity based reps you're going to really work on quick rates of force production or um like yeah, quick rate to force production. That's actually what it's called. Um, and you will get like a stretch shortened cycle happening a little bit with the lat, just making sure that you're going all the way there. But really, this is all about training the central nervous system to fire, fire, fire very quickly with these. So single arm and then also banded rows um, with this. And as a bonus, um, I also like to do a, a isometric for this. Um, really helps our grapplers um, have a, some endurance back there holding that position. You just simply take the band, pull it into a scapular retracted and depressed position, the elbows back, and then you walk back before you start to feel your arms come back and you hold that for as long as you possibly can. Now, I didn't necessarily mention pull-ups or any pull-up variations. I think they're great. I think they're awesome. They can build some strength, um, you know, whether it's neutral, reverse, standard. Um, so they are in there. They're just pretty hard to do for more of a power-based movement. I would, I would throw the, these in um, as some accessories or some weighted variations if you're trying to look to build some strength in the vertical pattern. So that was 15, maybe 16 with maybe bonus 17 different exercises that you can cycle in and out through your program. Um, I hope this helps all of you. If you want help with your training, with your programming on how to bring this all together with all the other muscles and movement patterns to help you perform to be a better athlete in whatever your sport is, just check out some of the links below and I'll see you in the next video.